You know, it's pretty safe to say that Jordan Peele is a huge animation fan. Uh, so him and Henry Selick uh, working together? Yes, sign me up. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's Netflix original movie review of Wendell and Wild, the newest film from director Henry Selick. So, Wendell and Wild is, of course, the newest stop-motion animation film from Henry Selleck. It tells the story of a character named Kat, who's voiced by Lyric Ross, who is an individual that lost her parents at a very young age. Her parents were the owners of this, like, really cool theme park. And in the process of everything, they are killed in a tragic accident, which puts Kat in a predicament where she is basically run through the system in very unfortunate circumstances. And in the process, she's brought back to her hometown. She's brought back to this, like, Catholic school and she is basically kind of a rebellious teen she's a very angry teen but in the process of everything this character of cat becomes a, a hell maiden which is this character that can bring you know the dead back from back to life and stuff like that or bring demons back from the you know, the underworld in a lot of respects that's where we get Wendell and wild they are two individuals that have this passion or this dream of opening a, a dream fair which is this like really interesting carnival uh they are kind of under the guise of their their father who's played by a voice voiced by Ravine rames of course who plays uh buffalo belzer and in the process they're brought back they cause causality and effect a lot of you know things go out of control like every henry Selick movie does and it's basically about this world where cat has to come to you know, her. she has to deal with her demons, she has to deal with her past, as well as dealing with these two individuals who are causing so much problems that is affecting the world that she lives in. So it's kind of a, you know, how do you kind of keep yourself, you know, under check? How do you deal with, like, growing up? How do you deal with, like, a very traumatic past? And it's very much like, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas or James and the Giant Peach or Coraline. It just deals with those very human emotion, uh, emotional elements in a lot of respects. So that's kind of the synopsis in a lot of respects. So Henry Selick is a very interesting character, a very interesting director. He's a director that hasn't done a lot of films in his career. And it's because, you know, stop motion animation, and animation in general takes a long, long time. I mean, stop motion animation could take, you know, five, six, seven years, to be fairly honest. You know, this movie started to be filmed in 2016 or 17 or something like that. So it's been quite a while. But he's a director that I don't think has gotten a, enough credit for his style and what he's been able to bring to the animation market. You know, you look at the kind of the, the synopsis and subset of, you know, The Nightmare Before Christmas, which was more known for being a Tim Burton project, even though Henry Selick was the main thrust behind behind it. It's similar to something like James and the Giant Peach, which is produced by, of course, you know, Tim Burton. But, you know, what what's interesting about Henry Selick is when he did Coraline, he is a director that has a very fantastical, very horrific approach to his character designs and his character elements. But he's a director that, you know, finds ways to make those characters appealing and interesting and make it interesting and unique for, you know, what it's worth. You know, after Coraline, he kind of disappeared. You know, he was trying to work with a film with Pixar on a film that fell through. And I think he was working uh, on Little Nightmares and stuff like that. So... You know, when this film Window a while was announced way back in like 2015 or 16, because, you know, stop motion animation is very difficult and takes a long time to do because they have to do one frame or one one movement per like tw 24 movements per frames. But you had to shoot like each individual shot. So it's very difficult. So now we finally have a new film from him. And of course, he's teaming up with Jordan Peele, who's a very famous horror director and very famous comedian. Of course, he brings in Keegan-Michael Key. Uh, who's, of course, partners with Jordan Peele when it comes to, like, the, the comedic aspect and stuff like that. And then they, you know, bring in people like James Hong and Ben Rames and Angela Bassett and, you know, all these people to voice the cast. And once I saw the trailer for this, I knew I had to see this film because, one, I'm a huge Henry Selleck fan because, you know, Coraline is one of my favorite anime films of all time. But this looks like, you know, a very fun, very, you know, Halloween-ish type film. It is a little sad that it is PG-13, but, you know, it's one of those things where you get really excited for a director that just hasn't done anything for a while it's like James Cameron in a lot of respects so the fact that it's been taking a while makes it more anticipated in a lot of respects so this movie's finally releasing on Netflix it's finally you know it's been out in the course the Toronto International Film Festival again it garnered pretty uh, amazing reviews some people didn't like it but most people did and so I want to thank Netflix for you know allowing me to see this early so with that said for my honest review of this movie I think Henry Selig knocked it out of the park again I think adding Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key 
absolutely delivers this movie. I think the ca voice cast in this movie is absolutely fantastic. I think this world really represents what Henry Selleck and his crew that he works with in the stop motion department really know and really uh, present extremely well. I think the uh, you know, the fact that these characters look, uh, even though they're clay and even though you know they're built with wireframes and stuff like that, there's almost like a, a wooden maquette aspect to it, and you really feel it like with the designs and kind of the the lines of the face and stuff like that. And you see it with like the way the characters move. I think the character of Cat is really interesting to look at. She has like this really cool design with like a, a very punk rock look to her. She wears like these big boots and she puts like this metal this strip across her like her eyebrow, which has like, some rings on it. I think that's a really cool idea. I think the world that is that they inhabit, the, the town that they inhabit feels like a very kind of dilapidated town that you would see in like, you know, after like, I don't know, the fall in 2000, you know, early 2000s, kind of like Detroit style in a lot of respects, just kind of this dilapidated town that, you know, the corporations are trying to take over. I think the idea of the corporation stuff is really interesting. This is a film that I really feel like Henry Selleck has a lot to say, and it was really helped with Jordan Peele's kind of his charisma and how he's able to tell an interesting story, but also have some really interesting deep meanings behind it. On top of everything, I think the world that Wendell and well, uh, Wild come from is really fascinating. Like the underworld, the underground, like in the depths of like wherever they are, the souls and stuff like that. They look like very much like Escher paintings. And you know, the fact that this character of uh, Buffalo Belzer is an individual that has a, um, a, a like a carnival of souls on his belly. He's like the, you know, I wouldn't call him the devil, but he almost feels like a, a version of the devil that just you know rocks these souls into like you know the the horrifying nature of like putting him through pain and stuff like that and just the world around it and just the really cool natures of like you know the way when Wendell and Wilder are putting down the cream for the hair cream to you know make the make uh, his hair grow and stuff like that and how they use that throughout the movie with like the very much the um, characters they raise from the dead and stuff like that and it's really cool because they look like the characters that you would see in like Coraline or maybe Paranorman and stuff like that and I thought that was just it's, it's a really unique film there's nothing like it there is very much in the vein of like you know Nightmare Before Christmas or or Coraline it really gives a horrifying aesthetic but there's a underlining beauty to it which I really found fascinating you know just the fact that they're able to create this world that is so fluid and natural but you can tell it's a stop-motion film just because there is a little bit off on the kind of each frame that pushes forward you know it feels just a little off but yeah like I said you know that's what this movie does really well it just creates a fantastical world like the creatures are scary to look at but they're also interesting to look at and they're fun to look at and like you know every character has a unique persona and personality to him and there's no character that feels empty even uh Shaban who is like this feels like uh, if you ever seen Mean Girls like the Rachel McAdams character and she has a couple of cohorts right next to her there's something interesting and awe-inspiring about those characters because they they feel very dimensional and they feel very you know non-rote and non-stupid in a lot of respects and they feel like they have purpose and that's what you know, when you look at like a character like Cat, who ends up getting like this real kind of interesting kind of mark on her, and then how that works out, and I just, I really like that. I really like the idea of like these characters just having some cool ideas and concepts behind them. If I had any problems with this movie, it's the nature of like how this movie starts to kind of go into its third act. I think this movie has some really interesting setups and really interesting ideas that's being presented when it comes to like what Cat is trying to be involved with, how she's trying to deal with like her loss and stuff like that, how, you know, the Window and Wild character have specific reasons why they're coming into this world. But when it gets into the final third act and when everything starts to get to its conclusion, I think the movie starts falling apart a little bit because it feels like they're they're rushing it too quickly. It feels like the the characters' dynamics and like the the bad guys, the antagonists are kind of just they're it feels like they're they're in the movie but they're not in the movie and they're just like they're played for almost stereotypes in a lot of respects so i wasn't really on board with that i like this like what they're doing with buffalo belzer but the way they wrap up his story it's really weird and kind of strange and kind of it's a it's a little kind of off-putting in a lot of respects so i was a little problematic with that and i feel that there are some choices made that feel like they just kind of didn't know where they wanted to end the story but unlike you know other henry selick films uh that have a real kind of uh, strong third act to him i feel like this just kind of falls apart as it moves along which is it's kind of sad because this movie like i said the first two thirds of it are really good, well done or some of the best you know i've seen in quite a while but it's when you get to that you know third act it still it starts to fall apart a little bit and it just leads to 
a conclusion that's heartfelt, but I think it's a conclusion that needed a little more oomph to it. It needed a little more, you know, punch up in the script. And I think it just feels like it's it, it like it cuts off. It just like a weird moment, I guess you could say. So take that for what it's worth. But yeah, um, overall, I really enjoyed this film. Definitely highly recommend it. it. Is definitely an interesting, different film that has some issues, but. I think if you kind of look past those issues, I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. So, anyways, with that said, that is going to be my take on this film, Window and Wild. It will be premiere on Netflix very, very soon. Uh, but I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. So, But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the comments below, let me know what you think of the film overall. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your kind of favorite parts? What was your least favorite parts? All that good stuff. But otherwise, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top of the phone is coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And uh, next time, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.